All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our good friend Pat Carmody was in from Southern Wine and Spirits with the mixed bag of wines. And um, well, we started out with a couple of Burgundies and Louis Latour, uh, one of the biggest names in Burgundy. This 2011 Bourgogne Chardonnay, a really fresh style with a little bit of a musky note to that uh, fresh apple and pear fruit and some earthy, minerally notes. Almost like fresh, diatomaceous earth there. Very fresh and bright on the tongue with juicy fruit and that light minerality shown through the finish. A good little wine, at $12. Um, definitely an entry-level wine from Burgundy. This Henry Darnot Bur Burgundy uh, Chardonnay, Bourgogne Chardonnay. Definitely had a little more nuance to it and minerality, that limestone kind of minerality you get from, from uh, Burgundy. Lemon drop candy, really light, pretty floral notes. Very pleasant bouquet. And even showing nicely on the second day, this entry-level wine from a small producer here very forward and juicy on the palate with that fresh mineral laced finish very pleasant uh, very good little entry-level wine definitely a step up from the big Negosa's label here and um, $22.50 almost double in price as well the Chateau d'Archambeau from Graves this is what you get for 15 bucks in Bordeaux and you know this Graves wines have a little bit of a peppery note to them even in a vintage like 2009 which was really forward and seductive for the most part and this one had a gravelly note to it. Like I said, a green peppercorn nuance coming out on the second day. Some nice currant and cherry plum fruit also, though. Very soft and smooth style of Bordeaux on the palate, as Graves usually are, showing that light minerality and that green peppercorn spice on the finish. All right, and then a couple of wines from uh, Nibam Coppola, or I'm sorry, Inglenook, which is... Um, Francis Ford Coppola bought the rights to this name. It's the original Inglenook property that he bought. And then, you know, well, some big company had the Inglenook name, which has been bastardized for the last couple of decades. And supermarkets with jug wines. And, you know, they used to put Chianti with the Inglenook label on it. Just things that really didn't even exist in California, just for marketing purposes. But uh, today, he's trying to resurrect this legendary name that at one time in the 40s, these were considered to be the greatest wines in Napa Valley among the cognizanti, the wine collectors of California wine at that time. The uh, Inglenook Zinfandel uh, from Rutherford um, for 43 bucks. I mean, there's not many Zinfandels you're going to be able to sell me at that price range, but this one, a little on the lighter style, which for Zinfandel can be a good thing. Some brambly raspberry, wild strawberry fruit notes of flowers and white pepper spice and spearmint. Really minty character to this wine and bright and fruity on the tongue with that fresh red berry uh, fruit. Notes of that mint and spice on the finish, light and zesty. And uh, not over the top for Zinfandel, a very good bottle of Zin. That's a little bit expensive. Usually in that price range, we'd like something that you can age for three to five years or more. <laughs> Zinfandel doesn't do so good with bottle age. It's best when it's first released, in my opinion. The cask is up next, and it's hard to tell what this wine is or what it was from the old lineup because it says Inglenook in big letters on it, and then in a little tiny square on the side it says cask, which they used to make a wine from Rubicon called cask, and they had this cork label on it. Great product, and, um, you know, this wine also is great. There is no denying this vineyard site, this old Inglenook vineyard in Rutherford, makes outstanding Cabernets, and this wine is 100% Cabernet with deep, dark, Current cassis berry fruit, toasty oak spice, a nice hand of that Rutherford dust, a very distinct terroir that you get from this part of Napa Valley. Classic Rutherford Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine, 2010, a big vintage here. Chewy wine, lots of layers of dark cherry fruit, uh, spice, earth, a firm hand of acidity holding everything together. Some lovely nuance, dark chocolate, espresso, really long layered finish. This wine needs some time. I don't care what you call it. It is excellent juice. At $75. That's what we had to drink with Pat from Southern Wine and Spirits. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.